Which wow. is it? So I jumped on my bike and I rode across the Goleta Freeway and I took my first flying lesson at San and I never quit. For the last 41 years, Julie Clark has been dazzling audiences at air shows around the world. I said, you know, I don't know if you know this, but next year's my final farewell season. The smoke is on and ladies and gentlemen. Julie is also among the first 20 female airline captains ever. And that doesn't just happen by accident. It takes extraordinary patience, perseverance, and skill to accomplish what Julie has accomplished. He said, well, when you walk down in the ramp office at LAX, you go into where you're going to get the paperwork, meet your crew, and check the weather in the ramp office, and there's a men's room right there. I said, okay. He said, well, there's not a door on the men's room, and I'm not sure how we're going to handle that. I'll buy a damn door, I'll even install it if you just give me the damn job. Yeah. The stuff they did then, they, they couldn't ever get away with today. Yeah. So last year down at Sun and Fun in Lakeland, Florida, Flight Chops and I decided to bring our two eight-year-old daughters down to meet this inspiring role model to women in aviation. To see Steve's immersive look at what it's actually like to fly with Julie, check out the Flight Chops channel. It was so cool to see the girls inspired not just by Julie, but by aviation in general. My episode here is primarily the story of how Julie got where she is today. The trip from California to Lakeland, Florida is not short, but it is definitely worth it. Sun and Fun is probably my favorite air show of the season. And at this point, my daughter Elena and Evelyn are good friends, so any excuse to get them together is quite fun. And the excuse this time was epic. They were gonna get to meet Julie Clark. Oh, Julie's so busy at these air shows though, it's really hard to have a quiet conversation with her. And I really wanted to tell her story going into her last season. So you might've seen the Flight Chops video about landing a Cessna in a neighborhood. And you might know that Steve and I went out to her house last fall to follow up. This video is primarily the conversation that I had with her there. There are people in my life that when I say I'm going to see Julie Clark, mm -hmm. or even they'll watch my Instagram and they'll mm -hmm. see me at Julie Clark, they oh. think I'm famous. They oh. think I'm beyond famous. <laughs> Boy, like, I can't believe no other life. you made the big time, <laughs> yeah, you know? Like, funny. you're a legend, really, you know, of the people that know you. Wow. And, um, and that's, that's, that's amazing. So, I guess what I wanted to talk to you about a little bit is how you got there. My dad was an airline pilot and he took me, I had never flown in a small plane until I took my first flying lesson. But unfortunately he was killed in a very notorious crash. But most people have heard my story before, so I don't. A shot by a passenger and that was something that just never happened in the early 60s, mind God. you. Yeah, just what a way um, that, like for a pilot to see and, he, and a you know? guy had called in sick and my dad was chief pilot. Wow. And my mom had just died just not even a year earlier. It was in an accidental choking. Wow. So my dad was just trying to raise three teenagers, keep the you know keep so he could be home at night. And a lot of times we have to go stay with our neighbors. But I remember he said he called up the Jurassic's our neighbors said I'm, a guy just called in sick. It's literally a trip to Reno, stopped in Reno, come right back. I'll be home by ten and I'll see them when they get home from school. So we stayed at the Jurassic, went to school, and that was the fateful flight of 773 if you google pacific airlines 773 wow. may 7th 1964 just a, a horrible thing that um just oh. never happened it was the first ever in the history of commercial aviation wow. so i flew with them on the dc3 and the martins and the f27 I, I i went on several trips with them and i just thought this was the coolest thing and i thought i don't want to just be a pilot i want to be an airline pilot Right. And then after this awful accident, I really was strong that I really wanted to do this for yeah. more reasons than just my own, but just to carry on my, the legacy of my dad. Sure. Locked cockpit doors is known as the Clark Act, named after that horrible, wow. you know, there was a cockpit door, but it wasn't locked, you know, when the, when the gunman went in and right. stuff. And I, luckily I got what they called a hardship scholarship from Bank of America to go to college at UC Santa Barbara. So I'm down there and I picked up an art history class and I had to buy the books. And um, so I remember calling her and I said, Arlene, I need $53. I still remember $53. And my, my aunt was 12 years younger than my mom. So she was barely 30, trying to take on three teenagers. My older sister was now in college, but Judy and I were 15. So it, it was kind of a rough 
atmosphere because yeah. she had two very young kids, like at four and five, you know. Yeah. And so she said, what do you need the money for? And I said, and she goes, we'll take it out of the Clark Estate. So I said, well, it's $53. So she sends me an envelope with cash in it. And I remember just no note, nothing, using your mom would write a note or, sure. you know. Yeah. But so I remember putting the money out like, wow, I never even held $53. <laughs> That's a lot of money. So I remember going, I, I, I was thinking, flying lesson, art history, flying lesson, which wow. is it? So I jumped on my bike and I rode across the Goleta Freeway and I took my first flying lesson. And, it's in, and I story. never quit. Wow. That was 1967. Wow. So I wasn't able to really solo and get my license till yeah. 69. Next year will be 50 years, April 14th. That I've and when you flying. when you showed up at the airport, there weren't a lot of women. There. Oh, so not at all. Lessons. I mean, yeah. no. I mean, friends didn't know what I was doing, and I was kind of smuggling book money. <laughs> <laughs> and so what were you yeah. flying? What oh, just have? a little 120. It was little yeah. And then I came up here. Now, now, flash forward to where I was trying to get instrument ratings, you know, better ratings, higher ratings. I'm at San Carlos Airport, yeah. and I'm water skiing at Marine World. Wow. And then I'm waiting tables at Charlie Brown's restaurant. So I water skied from, you had to be at work at 10. Mm -hmm. Then I get off at 5.30. Then at 6.30, I'd be at Charlie Brown's and I wait tables till 2 a.m. And four hours later, I'm back at the San Carlos Airport <sighs> saying, I need to take another flying lesson. I had all this cash <laughs> for my tips. <laughs> <laughs> and did and they have a tower then at San Carlos? No, 1228, wow. Unicom. Yeah, and so you get your private certificate. Mm -hmm. And then and right then from there, I went right, right into my instrument because I just wanted to get that. Uh, and I still tell students yeah. that I don't don't worry about the commercial. That's a fun rating. Yeah. Get that yeah. instrument. That's brutal. It's hard. Yeah. And um, get that next. And that's what I did right. then commercial. Mm -hmm. But it was just from there, like, um, now I married a Navy pilot husband. I was working on my CFI. And, uh, oh, no, you know, I already had my CFI, but I... I, I was working on my multi-engine, mm -hmm. so I kept flying, uh, sometimes maybe T-34s up to San mm -hmm. Carlos to take a lesson in the old Aero Commander 500s, oh, wow. do you remember those? Yeah, yeah. Because this guy in Visalia said, you get a multi-engine rating in that old Aero Commander 500, I'll give you a job, you can fly prisoners around. And I thought, oh! Because wow, you need, perfect. you know, I need, I need to, I need to build flight time. So I was flying up to San Carlos. It's the only place I could find anywhere that had an Aero Commander. Wow. So I learned, I uh, got my multi at Gold, Golden West, a Golden West Aviation. Yeah, it's it, not there anymore. Oh, okay. It's actually where the Hiller Air Museum. Okay. It, they were near there. But yeah. Anyway, so I got that. So I go back and I'm all excited. And meanwhile, I'd gotten this job flying at the Navy, for instructing in T-34s as a civilian instructor right. through my Navy pilot husband, who really helped me get that job. But um, I go in, I show the guy, and I, that was an Aero Commander. He goes. Well, you're you're just too little. What if those passengers, you know, those prisoners got loose? You couldn't overtake them. No, I can't give you the job. Uh, I mean, it's the first time I ever wanted to just punch its lights right, out. Right. I mean, I could have gotten a multi-engine rating anywhere down in Fresno. Wow. But, um, so anyway, I, I ended up flying for Agritil, which was farm equipment parts around an old gutted out 310. Wow. And um, I flew to all these off-site runways or, or roads to give for tomato harvester parts, mm -hmm. people that needed um parts for the tomato harvesters. But wow. I learned the valley, you know, the sound came Did out. you say roads? Like he was on Oh, they'd say, oh, go to the Avenal VOR. Now you go eight miles south of that, you'll see a dirt road, just land right there. <laughs> uh, I mean, there were times, and I'd come home and tell my husband. <laughs> is this the 70s? Is this this the would be the mid, the mid 70s, right before I got wow. on, because finally when I was now qualified, I had multi ended time, even had a citation type rating, you know, fast forwarding through a lot of yeah. flying. And now um, the Vietnam War was ending. And yeah. you think uh, they'd even let a woman in? I mean, all these pilots were coming out from the military and getting all the jobs. Oh, and boy. Yeah, so I finally got hired in 76. But. Wow. That was, uh, and that's, I guess it's like a lot of phone calls, getting hung up on a lot. Right. We're not hiring females yet. My husband's saying, take your picture off the resume. They would literally so, say that. Right? Oh, absolutely. We're not, oh. Uh, yeah, we're not hiring women yet or girls. We always were girl pilots, never right. female pilots right, or women right. pilots, yeah. Just, it's just must have always been this way. You're just building oh, time. You just have to get the experience. Yeah. And just That's why I tell people the they come with yeah. me, their certificate with the ink still wet on it. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah, teach yeah. you judgment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can insight you with what it means, but right. when it comes to the actual... You know, I, I, my dad used to say, <laughs> and I was too young to understand, yeah. make a decision, damn it, even if it's wrong. <laughs> and, you know, I, I was too young to understand what that meant. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I see that. Make <laughs> right. a decision, damn yeah. it, even if it's wrong. Yeah. Don't, uh, well, may, uh, well, you're still going down. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, so pick you know, something and go you with it. Pick it, and if you don't Get make in. it, you, at least you had, you had your eye on it. Yeah. 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 Just make sure that the tree is soft. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. But you got hired. The, the foot got in the door, yeah. and you didn't let it out. And right. That was so then I was after having to cut my hair, and I mean, yeah. I have really, really long hair, right. and cut it more than once. The, the, my final interview, I had cut it to like chin length, and he said, "We'll hire you, but you, the hair's got to go." And I said, 
how, how, how much further? <laughs> he said above the ear. I said, Wow! Oh gosh! Really? Okay. Above the ear. Oh, oh yeah, it was kind of. And my memory, I remember. They wanted saying, you to have a boy haircut. Well, basically. they just yeah. kind of wanted it to look like they didn't want any publicity. Right. And I was known as Julie Ames, Julie Clark Ames. But um, they didn't want to do a lot of publicity, and that was fine. But then, as the word got out. That's all. The, every flight turned into like a, like a media frenzy to the point I ran down to the chief pilot's office and said, "I just want to do my job and I just want to be treated normal. Please get them off my butt." Whoa, As women pilots, geez. I was one of the first of twenty in the United States and twenty-one, so we're called ISA plus twenty-one. Wow. Yeah, and that's for international social affiliation women airline pilots, wow. which has <laughs> now grown to thousands, including lots of countries. I so love it's it. a huge organization. Yeah. But no, at the beginning, um, wow. it, it, and then um. Also, on my final interview, this Captain August said, "Well, we still got one more problem, Jules." Oh. And I, I remember saying, "I remember he was leaning forward, and, I go, and this is after taking a check ride, going out over Cali and I, and doing all this. You know, this is when I was flying for Twin Otters at Golden West. Wow. From there, I went to Houston West. But I said, "Sir, what, what's the problem?" And he said, because I used to call all the time, said, it's the girl from San Joaquin, what do you want me to tell her? <laughs> and I and I said, I was just calling to update my flight time and stuff. Yeah. Well, just tell her, we'll call her back. Well, then they never call me back. So I just kept calling them because right. I, I had to get on with a commuter first. And there weren't that many commuter airlines back in the 70s. Right, it was right. like it, one up in Maine, one in Seattle, and, and Golden West in L.A. Wow. That was about the three, right. you know, now they all, every airline has their own. Yeah. But anyway, um, I said, so what's the problem? He said, well, when you walk down in the ramp office at LAX, you go into where you're going to get the paperwork, meet your crew, and check the weather, you know, the ramp office, and there's a men's room right there. I said, okay. He said, well, there's not a door on the men's room, and I'm not sure how we're going to handle that. I looked at the guy and said, I'll buy a damn door. I'll even install it if you just give me the damn job. <laughs> because, I mean, you already told me to cut my hair. Now look at me. You're, I mean, come on. Wow. And so he goes, you know, I like your spunk. When can you start? Wow. So you know what I said to him? I said, nine months ago I could have started. But, and he goes, we'll be on class on Monday. And I just, I went home. He said, honey, I got my job. You know, wow, I that's know, such I an just, amazing story. It, it was just, so they kept, like, so moving, they kept moving the carrot a little bit. Oh, and yeah. And I, like, yeah, the, yeah, jumping the hoop a little higher. Right, right. Just making the hoop a little higher. And finally you and pushed finally through, I got yeah. the job. Did they ever? <laughs> Did they ever put it on? Well, no, people said, I said, not only did I never have to install it, I never had to buy it either. But here's how we yeah. handled that. I had to knock and say, Julie. So um, then the, I would just walk straight in, not look. And, you know, go, go, go. Oh, shit, I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're still you're saying the real Julie Clark here. That's good. <laughs> but then I found out that I, I was the one of 110 pilots. And I was a little queen bee. They yeah. never had another woman. They wow. never had a business wow. after I'd already gone to the majors. So you're the only woman they ever employed. Ever had. Wow, and they crazy. treated me really well. Good. Yeah, I, it was much different when I went to the major airlines because the major airlines were just, um, you know, it's, that was back when the captain was the ruler of the ship, and you just sit there and sit on your hands and look straight ahead. Maybe I'll let you fly. Maybe I won't. I'm right. quoting what was said to me literally. Literally. And, um, and well, that's what I was going to ask you next. So, like, once yeah. you got in at the, at the regional, once you got in, you sort of earned oh, their yeah, respect yeah. and they were cool. And I spent over a year trying to get that job. And then I kind of, right. the same day I got hired with Hughes Air West, I got a telegram <laughs> from Western Airlines. So I had taken the stay nine test with Western, the stay nine test with Hughes Air West, and got hired, but two different class dates. Mm -hmm. So I, I was excited about Hughes because it was the kind of the um, carry through of my dad's airline. Oh. And what was cool is when I got hired with the airlines, I was Julie Ames. Right. Uh, though I used Julie Clark Ames, but yeah. I was just Julie Ames. So it wasn't until I was flying the line and said, you're Ernie Clark's daughter? Oh my God, you know, because he oh, was a Czech airman and everybody really liked him. Right. And so I was so I was treated okay, but when you first got hired, they just wanted to see what you're made of. Right. And yeah. the stuff they did then, they, they couldn't ever get away with today. Yeah. You know, you're treated as an, and like I used to say on my captain brief, uh, my last say 10 years and I was the last, See, so yeah, I got hired. I mean, I got hired in '76, became a captain in '83, mm -hmm. and retired in 2006. So, my last 20 plus years, I was a captain. Mm -hmm. And I would say to them, if you see something you don't like that I'm doing, you tell me. And the only reason I'm sitting here and you're sitting over there is because I'm older. <laughs> That's the only reason. You know, maybe a little bit more experience. But if you see something that doesn't look right, you yell it out, baby, or take control or whatever yeah, yeah. to keep us safe. You yeah. know, but that wasn't. wasn't you no, know, like that, that came that way in the mid, uh, I'd say late 80s, yeah. CRM. And then back then it was cockpit, then it became cabin, then it became a crew flight resource. Deck, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, flight deck, and then yeah. crew resource management. Mm -hmm. Meaning, the, get the flight attendants involved as well. Sure. Yeah, because I used to tell them if it smells, smokes, or seeps, I don't care if you're in the middle of a demo or we're putting the landing gear. You come up and tell me, right? Because we need to know. Yeah. Don't think you're oh, we're going to bother with the. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Just let us know. Right. Yeah.
Um, and then did you encounter other women pilots at a certain point? Like start to you start yeah. To when see we met, the, when the first of us started getting hired with different airlines, yeah. the FAA called us. Uh, the FCC called us, <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted us to meet in Washington D.C. So yeah. um, the airlines sent us out there, and we wanted to just see how are we going to fit in women. You know, yeah, yeah, they yeah. were just saying how, how do we bring in women into this right. flight deck That's of funny. all men because it's an yeah. all boys club you know right. you meet your other women pilot friends and you find your personalities are very similar right. because you have to be they're not going to hire some little mishy-mashy little right. can't make a decision to save her soul and well oh yeah go ahead go first right. you know right <laughs> Yeah, so it's just uh, we so all had the same personality, so we all got along really well. Yeah, I can see that. That's that spirit it must have taken, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to kind of push through. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's a type of personality. Right. And they call it a, a, a type, type A. Type A, right. Yeah, yeah and I guess what, what strikes me now is like when I look at the girls, um, like my girls, when mm -hmm. I say girls, like yeah. eight-year-old yeah, And girls, right? she's adorable. Both <laughs> yeah, of the girls are yeah. that. It's so sweet. And like the world that they go into, I mm -hmm. see a lot of women helping women. Mm -hmm. It's just like after hearing you talk, it sounds mm -hmm. like you you were one of the pioneers mm -hmm. of that. You know, because if what I say when, when young ladies call me up or mm -hmm. girls like my daughter mm -hmm. want to get into flying, yeah. I always say like there's support. I look for the 99s, mm -hmm. look for women in aviation. Yes. Like mm -hmm. if you, you will Both find great. support, right? Mm -hmm. like right, those yes. people will help yeah. you somehow. Yep, and I have yeah. supported women that are already flying for the airlines. One is now flying for Atlas, and yeah. she's still using it as a stepping stone because yeah. she's got to get typed in a 747. But now she's going through a divorce, and she's she calls me all the time, and I just hang in there. I, I went through two divorces; it really sucks. Right. But she goes, I just don't know if I can. can I said, Don't think that way. You don't you let that career go because of him. Right. You know, right. and he's the, a non-flying type. But right, right. anyway, I'm, so I'm supporting her in any way I can, even above the flying. You know, because there's life well, beyond great. the flying too. That's great. And so anyway, thanks for sharing all that. It's, of course. Um, yeah. Just to kind of think about, you know, wrapping up what we've said is like for women in aviation, it takes that that certain type A kind of get your mm -hmm. foot in the door and don't don't just give don't up. let it out. Through. You're right. And, and and it's a fine line. It's like chasing sponsorships. I have really helped a lot of airshow pilots through that as yeah. well. It's it's a it's a fine line of being a pest or being aggressive enough that, hey, I like her spunk. Like right. the guy said, when can you start? Right. And I thought, oh, I could have started nine months ago. Right. But um, it's a fine line that you're walking with being a pest to where they don't like you. Right. Just get out of here. and you. Or like I remember one time with Mopar, they said, if you want to an answer right now, ma'am, we're going to say no. Now don't call us. And so I waited for four months, and then they ended up calling me. Well, and it ended up being nice. a sponsorship that went on for just under 20 years. Wow, that's but, great. Um, it's a fine line, just like trying to get a job sure. you know, uh, when you're a minority. Right. You know. International social affiliation okay. of women in airline pies. It has since been changed to uh, more where we have scholarships, fundraisers, do the big thing like women in aviation, and then we meet together with them in different conferences. I'm not as active anymore, but they honor the first 21 of us because we're the founders. Okay. So uh, be sure to Google ISA plus 21. Okay, yeah, excellent. Well, so. hey, that was so great. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Watching Julie taxi out this year is going to have special significance for me. I'll be honest, it's going to be bittersweet. I've seen her show a dozen times, so it's not really about that. But more about how without Julie and the mentors in my life who idolized her, the world of aviation just seems like a foreign place. In an age of high-tech machines and extraordinary systems, maybe we're lacking a little bit in the kinds of personalities it took to build all this for us. A little lonelier that she won't be flying, but every time I see a woman in an airline uniform, I'll smile to myself and think of Julie Clark. I'm proud to have this platform to help spread the word about her final season and her contribution to aviation. Check out her website, julieclarkairshows.com, and go find a show near you where you can see her this summer. Do it. Get a book signed. There's a legend in our midst. The smoke is on, and ladies and gentlemen... If you're headed to Sun and Fun this year in 2019, you can find Julie signing autographs at the Tempest booth on Thursday and Steve and I at Four Flight on Friday. Um, I'm a grandma. I have two teenage granddaughters. They got her for me when she was like six weeks old. In, in, in Oregon, you can get them that young. But, um, that's the only puppy I've ever raised. I've always had sound dogs or shelter puppies. So uh, we're, we're very tight. Yeah. Julie's T-34, while it's fully capable of aerobatics, is much larger and heavier than most aerobatic airshow airplanes. And it demands... She 
loves that bag. That's kind of her go-to, like if there's thunderstorms or things she doesn't like, she's in that bag, like right now. That's her awesome. go-to place. <laughs> what did she say? What did she say? <laughs> uh, you're the boss. Whatever you say, you say, Dad, I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I think she knows that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I think it's fair to say that we all left Sun and Fung a little bit more inspired about aviation. A huge thanks to Julie for agreeing to make this video and for all that she's done for aviation. Big thanks to you for watching. Until next time, be safe and fly your best.